Our call of order would come from Psalms 100. Psalms 100. I'd like for you to repeat after me. Make a joyful noise to the Lord our land. Make a joyful noise to the Lord our land. Serve the Lord with gladness. With singing. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It's he that has made us. It's he that has made us. Not we ourselves. Not we ourselves. For his people, we are his people. And sheep of his passion. And sheep of his passion. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving. And to his court with praise. And to his court with praise. For the Lord is good. 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 Endure it to all generations. And to endure it to all generations. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Say good morning, everyone. Good morning. Turn to 347. Ready to go? 347. <laughs> Have that last scene. There's a happy land promised over in the grave. Beyond where the same owner shall soon the glory share. Heaven where the souls of me shall enter and live on forevermore. Everybody will be happy over there. Come on, me sing. Everybody will be happy over there. Oh, and we will 
Good morning, church. Good morning. The lesson will come from Genesis 18, verses 11 through 14. That is again Genesis chapter 18, verses 11 through 14. Amen. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. Yeah. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Yeah. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of surety bear a child, which I am old? Uh -huh. Is anything too hard for the Lord? Amen. At the time I point it, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, yes. and Sarah shall have a son. Uh -huh. Amen. May the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, and the doing of the divine word. Yeah. When I should feel the Oh, 
Dear Lord, yes. first of all, I just gotta thank you for just allowing me to be here. Yes. Because I was sick yes. on my bed. Yes. But Lord, you saw fit to heal my body. Yes. Lord, you saw fit to sit for me to see another week, another day. Yes. So Lord, I'm gonna be grateful to you and give you all the honor, all the glory, all the praise. Yes. Not just me, Lord, but for those that have been sick this week, you blessed them here and they stand in here today. Lord, we thank you for Brother Coos being here with us. We thank you for Brother Steve walking in here with us. Okay, Lord, all those who had ailments, who had afflictions, who had sickness, and walking, they stand in. So, Lord, we're going to give you the glory. We're going to give you the honor for that. Lord, Jesus, when you was in the garden, you told the Father, not my will, but your will. Lord, line our will up with yours. Yes, yes. Line our passions up with yours. Line our hearts up with yours. Yes. That you may get the glory. Yes. That you may get the honor. Yes. That this sin sick world yes. will know that you are healer. Yes. They'll know that you are provider. Yes. That you know that you created all things. Yes. The heavens and the earth. Yes. And that when your son Jesus rose. With all power. Not only when that boulder rolled away, our burdens rolled away with it. So, Lord, I thank you. I can't thank you enough for what you have done in the lives of everyone underneath my voice. So, Lord, I'm going to thank you. I'm going to praise you. Today, we're going to rejoice in your power. The power that you possess. That if we just walk and trust in you, that you humble and die, but you got us. With our power, trusting that power, that Lord, you will roll our burdens, you yeah. will heal us, and you will bless us. So, Lord, as Brother Jeff comes up and deliver us, and thus said the Lord, not let us just be hearers, but do of that word, Lord. Thank you for all our friends, our families, our visitors that are here with us, Lord. And Lord, we just gonna rejoice and give you all the glory because this day was set aside for you to get the glory, for you to get the glory. So, Lord, I thank you, and we ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Yeah.
about Jeff and you know when somebody introduced me I usually want my wife to hear what they have to say. I don't want her to be able to say she'll know uh, what kind of man she has. So, I want to make sure Sister Miller listen uh, about her husband uh, this morning. Brother, Brother Jeff Miller was baptized into the body of Christ on July the, the 3rd. Uh, 1994 uh, under the leadership of brother, the late brother Archie Davis uh, at the College Heights Church of Christ. After five years from his baptism, uh, he began preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, Jeff worked very closely with brother, brother Archie Davis. Uh, he was with him, uh, brother Davis, he and his family, and they relocated to Valdosa, Georgia in August of 2004. And during his stay in Valdosa, he became the interim minister for the Qu Quitman Church of Christ uh, for three months. In July of 2006, Jeff and his wife moved back to Pine Bluff, Arkansas, and he diligently uh, stepped right behind him, uh, back in his place, uh, working with the College Heights congregation. Uh, Brother Jeff Miller was also elected as chairman of the Christian Retreat since 2006 in uh, Hot Springs, Arkansas, great event of the meeting of Christians uh, for a weekend, and uh, uh, we want to make it our business if possible to go and be a part of that. Uh, he was taken uh, on the responsibility, he has taken on the responsibility of uh, revitalizing promoting this event. Uh, he was appointed youth minister that studied College Height in 2006 also, and he held that position for June 2010. Uh, in June or January 2011, he became the minister of the Wapasika Church of Christ. I said that right, I believe. Wapasika, I'd like for Sister Nelson uh, to say that, you know, she tries. And she called it something like it's out of space or something. But Jeff is the minister of the Wapasika Church of Christ in Wapasika, Arkansas. And during his tenorship at Wapasika, the church attendance has tripled. Uh, since January 1st, 2012, there has been a total of about 14 baptisms. And praise the Lord. Uh, the, Lord is doing, the Lord is doing the increase just as he started in 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse number 6. Uh, during this time, Jeff's wife, uh, the lovely, he said some good things, you ought to get some bop, 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 brownie points out of this now. Uh, the lovely Felicia Lisa Miller uh, has been by his side faithfully in all these many years. That's not the note, but I'm just giving him some brownie points. <laughs> they have been married for 18 years. They have two children, uh, Keota and Julius. One of Jeff's favorite scriptures is John 3 and verse 30. He must increase while we must 
decrease. His favorite saying is, it's not about me, it's about the Lord. And our favorite uh, saying here is, let go and let God. And after one more song, Brother uh, Lamar, uh, the next voice you hear is Brother Jeff Miller. Sing, just sing, come on and sing, just sing, because we love the Lord. I'll be and sing, come on, you all and sing, just sing, come on and sing, just sing. Yeah. Lord, we love you. Yeah. 
Jesus may be praying together, we all say amen. amen. God is a good God. Amen. Since he's good, we ought to act like he's good. Amen. We got so many reasons to say thank you. Amen. And if it not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? I'm just happy to know that God is still good. He's just good on Sunny day. Yeah. Amen. Not just good when you got a pocket full of money. Yeah. He's not good when just good when your children are acting right and ain't nobody in jail and ain't nobody in the hospital. <laughs> but he's good yeah. all the time. Yeah. Since he's good all the time, we ought to say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for just being good. Yeah. In spite of us, yeah. he's still good. I'm just happy. I'm just happy to be a part of his family. Amen. I don't know who my folks is, so since I know who my folks is, I know how to act. Uh -huh. You know who house you in, you know how to act. Yeah. I'm in God's house, is that right? Yeah. So in God's house, you ought to be to act like you're one of his children. Amen. So singing ought not be hard to you. Amen. Praying ought not be hard to you. Communion with the communion with the saints ought not be hard to you. Listen to a sermon ought not bother you. Somebody wants to say, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. I'm just glad to be here. So for those that have a time in your, on your clock and you already to set my time, go on and do what you do. For me and the Lord are going to have a good time. Are you all right? I'm just thankful to see Brother Steve this morning. I mean, he and sisters. Sister Steve, <laughs> it's so good to see you all. I told him a while ago, man, you're looking good. And you know, he just grinned, big laugh. <laughs> looking good. God bless you both. Good to see you. And this brother Hopkins and your wife, God bless y'all. And it's just so good to, to the leadership, the elders and your deacons here, just for giving us, uh, Sister Miller, an opportunity to come and to say a few words. And uh, so many of your faces will. Lisa and I are very familiar with. We just want to let you know that we appreciate your prayers. Uh, our difficulty, time, and coming life, but God is still good. And uh, we, we know not what the day may hold, but we certainly know who holds. Ain't that right? We know who holds. So we're just thankful for that. Uh, I'm going to have to update my bio for some reason. I guess it's right about eight, nine years behind. Uh, Lisa and I, we've been married some 20, 26 years uh, in March. Yeah. March I mentioned to another day, I said, what do you want to do? She said, I'm going to leave it in your hand. I said, I'll tease her. I said, I want you to take it to a barbecue joint. <laughs> Y'all pray for us. Pray that the Lord continue to strengthen us as we go from day to day. I don't consider myself to be a long-winded preacher. So it is within my goal to, to have you out on time. I do all I can to have you out by 2 o'clock, right, all right? <laughs> I will keep my word, brothers. I will keep my word. I will have you out by 2. <laughs> when you look back over your life, you think things over. Many of us ought to look back and say, I won't complain. Hmm. Right. Our good days have our way. Right. Our bad days. Right. So I won't right. complain. Right. I'm thankful yes. for the past. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for the hurts, yeah. the joys, uh -huh. and all the greatness. Yeah. But I'm still going to praise him for the future. Because God has been good to us. And I'm just glad to know that he's been mighty, mighty. Y'all, I hope y'all don't mind me getting a little happy. I just can't help it. But he's been mighty, mighty good to me. I've had some bad days and some rough days, but I won't complain. Because the Lord has been good to me. So I'm thankful for that this morning. Uh, yesterday was another challenging day in the life, a life where God is able. Yes. Yes. Who would think that a 33 year old would die from the flu? Yes. God is still yes. able. Yes. All right. 
and Lord bless us for still being able to drive down. We got here a little bit after midnight last night, but God is still good. Yes. Yes. So the devil wanted to win, to yes. just, just call and say, you ain't going to go. Yes. God, the word of God got to go forward. Yes. So we're going to pray, pray God through it all. Yes. When you look at Genesis chapter 18, Come at Genesis chapter 18 and in verses number 11. Just a, some good reading. And some good motivation. Sometimes we need to be motivated. We need to know that we serve an evil God. And that ain't nothing too hard for the Lord. Amen. Not too hard for the Lord. Right, when you look at these, in Genesis chapter 18, and in fact, when you look at the first five books of the Old Testament, the Old Testament is known as the instructions of the law. Right. These five books, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, these five books come the two is the first division of the Hebrew canon. Uh -huh. It's commonly known as the law of Moses. Right. They are the foundation, these books, are the foundation for everything in the Bible. Right. Uh, these books contain some information that will help you to grow thereby right. in the word of God. Even in the book of Genesis, the book is known as the book of beginning. Yeah. Just think about absolutely nothing, but that still was a beginning. Yeah. There you can see the universe. There you can see man and woman. Yeah. There you can see sin and death. Yeah. There you can see promise and redemption. Yeah. There you can see origin and sacrifice. Yeah. There you can see civilization take place. Right. Uh, this origin is something every Christian needs to know. Yeah. Everybody needs to know that the Lord is able to take nothing and to make something. Right. Somebody ought to say, is there anything too hard for the Lord? Uh -huh. So I want you to, you had to take notes this morning and and call it a scripture, call it a, what you want to call it in your notes is a title. All right. Just write down, is there anything too hard All right. for the Lord? Amen. When we read this story, it's not just another story, folks. It is a story of a man's life. Mm -hmm. right. If I get a little too loud, sound tech just... Just turn me down, turn me off, and tell me to move back and get it. I'm sorry. <laughs> but in this, you're going to see a man's life that is full of faithfulness mm -hmm. toward God. Right. And we need more men that have this kind of faith. Oh, yeah. We need men that will move at the very command of God. Right. We need men that if God should move, you don't question God, Amen. but you trust God and you take him at his word. Amen. If God said, I, I need you to, to move, you need to already be packing your bag because you trust God Amen. to make a way Amen. out of no way. Amen. If we had that man who trusted God, who believed that whatever God said, God will do. Uh -huh. We'll have better communities. We have better cities. Yeah. We will be in a better America. Mm -hmm. We would even have a better world. Yeah. Just imagine if men would rise up at God's command and move forward and trust God. Yeah. Aren't you glad that Abraham trusted God? Whatever God said, he believed. Yeah. Amen. Abraham's life in the scripture, you'll see that he's a friend of God. Yeah. Ain't that like being a friend of God? Amen. Somebody, this ain't even a lesson, but that's a shout right there. Yeah. It's good to be a friend of God. Yeah. Because when you're hurt, uh -huh. you can call on your friend. Yeah. When it seems like you're alone, yeah. you can call on your friend. Yeah. When folks walk out of your life, yeah. you can call on your friend. Yeah. Ain't nothing like having a friend like Jesus. Yeah. Somebody said he's a company. Somebody said he's a doctor in the hospital. Somebody said he's a lawyer 
God into his own household yeah. and took care of him. Yeah. See, we need men that are, that are very compassionate. Yeah. Men. Yeah. We need men that don't mind stepping in. Oh, and somebody said, look here, you don't have a dad, but I so will do all I can to step in and be a help in your life. Yeah. We need more men that still pick up a, a basketball and play ball for two. We need more men who will pick up a baseball and play a few rounds. We need men that still teach a boy how to be a man. We need men that will teach a young boy how to grow up and be a real man. We need men that will teach a boy to pull your pants up, stand up straight, and speak like a man. We still need men. We need real men that will stand up and teach young men how to be a man. Ain't nothing too hard for the Lord. So in Genesis chapter 11, you see that he was there to some men that act like they're so tough, they don't know how to be a compassionate person. Loosen up. Right. I ain't never hugged my child. You better hug him. But I don't tell my child I love him. You better tell him. If you don't tell him, the world will. That's right. And Genesis, let me move forward because I want to keep my word by two o'clock. In Genesis chapter 12, total trust in God. God told Abraham, Get out of your country uh -huh. and from among your kin people yeah. and from among your father's house yeah. unto a land that I will show you. Yeah. After God spoke these things, Abraham got up and left, not knowing where he was going. Totally, completely, firmly trusted God. That came to faith, folks. So just trust God. Yeah. And God will make a way. So in Genesis chapter 12, there was some total trust. In Genesis chapter 13, he was a peacemaker. I want you to just, I'm trying to take you back so we can all come forward. In chapter 13, remember when Lot and Abraham were together with their many flocks. See, see, God is a peacemaker, folks. He don't like no division. He don't like all that trouble. God is a peacemaker. And this, this is a prime example in Genesis chapter 13 that God, God and his people are peace about peace. The land was not able to bear. You see this? Because of the substance was great. There was strife between the husband and Abraham. And the cattle and the herd of Lot's cattle. Abraham said to Lot, let there be no strife. Right. He said, let there be no strife. He said, matter of fact, I beg you. All right. Between me and you. All right. He said, let there be no strife between me and you and my husband. He said, for whatever, we are brothers. Uh -huh. Yes, we are. He said, if you go this way, uh -huh. I go that way. Amen. If you go to the north, yeah. I go to the south. Amen. What was he trying? He was trying to make peace. Yeah. Sometimes we got to learn to make peace yeah. amongst our brethren. Yeah. Don't allow nothing to get in your way of peace. Yeah. And then in Genesis chapter 14, <laughs> here you see he was a brave warrior. Uh -huh. His nephew Lot was taken captive by the king. Yeah. Which had three other armies with him. Abraham army only had 318 servants right. and pursued four armies to Dan. Right. Then all the way, Abraham brought back all the goods. Uh -huh. <laughs> he brought back all the goods yeah. and also lied. Right. And all the women and all the people. All right. Do you know who your friend is this morning? Yeah. You trust God. Amen. Yeah. You don't have to have a whole lot. God can take a little and do so much with it. You got to trust God. If God said, look here, it's going to rain on a Sunday day, set your tub up. It's going to rain. You better trust him. Trust him when you can't trace him. Trust God, and I promise you, he'll make a way for you. Then in Genesis, I'm going to get you where I need you. I want you to, 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 to see this. Is anything too hard for the Lord this morning? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Has anybody been going through something you just need some motivation that God is still able? Has anybody been going through something and you just need to hear a 
Keep holding with yours. This ain't my lesson, but I'm gonna tap this. The Lord has brought many of us from a mighty, mighty long way. He done took us from back yonder. He brought us uptown. He's been good to us. He allowed us to be educated. Somebody gotta say thank you. Somebody, we hold good job. It ain't because of you, it ain't because of the goodness of God. Somebody gotta say thank you. That he been good to us. Oh death, oh death, oh death, oh death could have been, could have been knocking on your door. But early, whether you know it or not, our conversation took place. Prepare to take my seat. Prepare to prepare. 
I'm going to teach you. I mean, I kept my word. Difficulties. All right. Anybody had some difficulties? Yeah, yeah. A preacher of what time by the name of Dallas Walker. All right. He said difficulties. He said it's your human experience, and that difficulties are part of human life. Difficulties have shown great accuracy and efficiency and take the men down wherever he go. Yeah. They slipped out the trail that led to the hidden retreats of the rich and the powerful. Difficulty yeah. have, have taken down good men like blood hell, taken down and escaped prisoner. Yeah. Difficulty have worked around sophisticated uh, security system and grabbed hold of those believed to be unreachable. Yeah. Difficulty have ridden the backs of king and president. Difficulty have called the arrogance to kneel down at the altar of humility. Difficulties have worn their way into tight-knit relationships guarded by love and loyalty. Difficulties have taken stolen, translated their genius, and broke down their mind. Difficulties have dragged them back into the world of ignorance. Difficulties have called men who was once on a high enter into the world of a taller of death. Of death. Difficulties have called good men who love
came to. And then chapter 3. And verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do a seed abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that works in us. Somebody else to think. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Philippians chapter 4. I'm almost with you, but I want you to see this. Philippians chapter 4. The Bible says in verse number 19, but my God, my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. I'm looking for a hand, Michael. I'm going to come down now. You got a hand? In verse chapter 4 of Philippians 4 13, the Bible says, I can. I can. Come on, church. See, y'all, 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 didn't, y'all thought this guy popular when Obama was saying. This been in the Bible way before he read. Stood up. He took the pedal. 
And he swung at the door. Well, when he swung at the door, he lost his balance. And he fell in the water. Oh, rascal didn't know. All he knew that his owner was in danger. Rascal who rose up out the water.